everybody, it's Mrs. Conquest. So we're gonna do a remote uh, learning lesson for you for art. And I was really thinking about how much I miss you guys and everything that's been going on. I know it's a little crazy, but this could be a really fun time for us. And one of the things that I'm missing the most is thinking about summer. <laughs> I'm missing you guys, but I'm thinking about now the good weather's here. So our art is gonna be based on that. We're gonna do something to do with sea life. And you're gonna have a lot of leeway. I had to take into consideration that you don't have watercolors and might not have pastels. So you're gonna have the freedom to use whatever materials you want. I'm gonna have you draw it obviously in a pencil first. Don't forget your eraser. Your eraser is your best friend. When I'm doing the lesson, however, I'm gonna do it in Sharpie so that you can see it. Um, you can see I did a little bit of start here just as a reference and it's probably a little difficult for you guys to see. I think when I go over it with the pen, you'll really be able to see it. So here's the parameters of the, um, the lesson and what is expected of you guys. So I would like you to work on this. I would like you to take your time. I would like you to think about the things we always talk about. Your eraser is your best friend. Every good artist loves their eraser because you'd never get it right the first time, obviously. And so erase whatever you don't like. Uh, you can, if you have a Sharpie, you could go over it in Sharpie when you're done. And depending on what you guys have at home, when you do the finished product, if you have watercolors, use watercolors. If you have pastels and you wanna use those, if you wanna use markers, crayons, whatever you guys have at your disposal, I kind of geared this for all ages, so everybody's gonna have their own level of it. Um, I would love you to think about your space. We always talk about that in class, utilizing really good space. So if your piece of paper is this big, obviously I don't want all the art to go on the bottom. I want you to fill your space. So let's talk a little bit about the overall project and then I will go into the details and a little bit of the lesson on how to draw sea life. So your overall picture is going to be your personal design. Sometimes I do make you guys an example just for reference. I will show you something that I worked on a little while ago for my new grandbaby's nursery. It's not a finish, this was my rough project, so it's not finished, but I'll grab it and show you. But I want you to concentrate before I show you, concentrate on what's under the sea. So think about this, you could go online, you could look up some things that might interest you to put in your, um, your particular design. Uh, I would love for you to include the sea floor and some interesting things about that. Uh, you could do coral, you could do all different kinds of sea life. Um, you could do some plants. I will um, give you the freedom. Now, your picture, again, let's go back to my example of a typical piece of paper rather than what I'm gonna be working on so that you can see it best. If this is your typical piece of paper, um, I want you to think about if you're gonna do sea life and we're concentrating on under the sea, at least two thirds of your picture should be about under the sea. The whole thing basically could be, you could do a little bit of sky up here and the water line up here and everything underwater, or you could do about two thirds, make this your concentration, and then do what you want on the top. So I will show you a little bit of what I did. And my dear daughter Madison is here to assist if I need her. So I'm hoping you can get a good vision on this. Maz, maybe you could check the camera and make sure they can see what I'm talking about on my little um, example page here. So obviously mine is round. It was made specifically round for a reason. Yours will probably be square. But if I come in close, if you can see this, I, um, I have got a cute little whale. I've got some, again, this is not a finished product. I, I added a lot of other details on the final product. But I have a little crab here. I have the sand. I have some starfish. I have some shells. I have some plants. I have a cute little seahorse that I did not finish in my rough draft. But I was also incorporating a lot up top because that was my, your assignment's a little bit different. But if you wanted to put a boat and a dog and a little boy and you know all of that, it's your design. As I always say, even if I give you an outline for what you're supposed to do, make it yours. Make it your vision. Don't make it my vision. Again, if you want, I always tell you this as well, if you want to use elements that you saw in mind that inspired you, it's always going to be your version of it, which is the wonderful thing about art 
is that everybody's gonna do it differently. And you might love one just as much as another and they could be completely different. So of course mine was for a nursery, so it's a little cutesy. That's great, don't worry about that. Um, I just wanna talk about um, how you're gonna color it. Again, it's whatever you have at home. I would ask, I'm gonna request that you um, take a photograph of it at the end of this week. So you work on it this whole week, a little bit here, a little bit there, or you can sit down and do it all in one sitting. Um, but I would love for you to take a nice photo of it. Uh, maybe moms and dads could help little ones. Um, older kids, you probably have your own phones. So go ahead and take a nice picture of it and I need you to send it to me. What I will do is I'll actually probably have you, you are all in contact with your teachers. If you can send them to your teachers, I'll have the teachers all get them to me. Um, I wanna do a little, uh, maybe a video montage coming up uh, of what you were able to complete. And the interesting thing is that even though you all as different grades usually get a different project, we're all gonna do the same project together because this is unusual learning and I think it'll be really fun. Littles, you know, littler kids, um, yours are gonna look very different than the older kids, that's still great. And I wanna see how you all use your creative imagination and your amazing artistic ability that you all have inside you to create something that's really just yours. So that being said, let's get on to some of our sea creatures. Um, I started up here with a couple of things. Um, I'm just gonna look at my notes really quickly. I think we will start with um, the crab that I have. And he's super cute. I think you'll really like him. Um, I'm gonna go over what I already drew and I'm gonna give you some easy steps um, that you can follow along. So Maz, just make sure that they can see this pretty well up here. All right, I might have to stand in front of it while I'm doing it, but I'll try not to. I'm gonna come to this side so it's a because I'm right-handed. All right, so basically on the crab, I just started with a nice sort of slightly arched line, all right? And you can see that that line, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, I'm doing it in Sharpie so that you can see it. You're gonna do these in pencil so that you can erase. I won't have that a luxury. Then I did sort of like a little scoop, almost made it look a little bit like a cereal bowl. Um, and then I added these two lines first just to give me those centering of the back legs. Uh, and then I just kind of added some shorter legs and a lot of them, they have some little legs. And actually on the side, the legs start to move forward. So you're gonna do a couple little here. Then I did the basic, again, this is gonna be a pencil for you guys, for me it's in Sharpie. And then I did these little curves. And one side of the curve, as you see, is a little bit longer than the other one. Now, let me just quickly, what did I do with that eraser? Had it right in my hand two seconds ago, right here. Okay, so I'm gonna erase the other little lines just so it doesn't get confusing and my Sharpie's still a little wet, so you're gonna see a little smudging. Yours is not gonna do that, obviously. And, um, and then you build on it. Like any piece of art, we start with a framework and we build on it. So. Now, if you think about um, crabs, they have little pieces of shell. So I would just build the shell like this, following that line you used as framework, okay? And they're kind of rounded a little bit, and they get a little bit smaller towards the top of your crab's leg. And then in your pencil, you would erase that, that original line we had. Or guess what? It's art. If you like the little line, it adds a little flavor to yours that makes you smile, then leave it. But think about your finished product, what you want it to look like, doing your best. As always, what do I always say? You don't have to be perfect, you just have to give me your very best. For the, for the hands, you're gonna come down and you're gonna make those little claws, almost like for all you gamers, Pac-Man, old school gamers. Um, and then you can add some, you can add either little antenna and eyeballs on them, and he's kind of cute, or you can sit those eyes right down here if you want. So if you want a little cutesy look, you're gonna do the antenna. If you want sort of a little bit more of a realistic, you might even go into the shell. Again, this is artistic interpretation. This is your version of that crab. Um, so he's pretty cute just like that. Again, if you wanna add a little shelling to his legs like we did up here, you can. 
don't have to. Again, look them up on the internet. Be inspired by what you see. So let's go on over here. So I just started with a super simple line. Let me just look at my notes super quick. All right, where is that? Oh, right there. Okay, so for this one, um, I kind of just started by going up and then making a top and I gave it a little bit of narrowing on the back, okay? So this is actually going to be an octopus. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna make a swirl. It can be any shape, it doesn't have to look like mine, right? And then I'm gonna come here, maybe add a few more, okay? Now I have the basic legs, okay? And then you're gonna kinda just fill in those legs, okay? They come up really close to the head, attach it to this one. And they could be any length, up close to the head, they're gonna stop up here, neck, we'll call it a neck, even though they don't really have a neck, sort of. Okay, I'm gonna attach this one up here, I'm gonna make it go like this, I'm gonna come down. Now, again, if you're looking online, you're going to see that they have little suction cups, so you can add those, look at some pictures. I'm gonna show you an easy way. I'm gonna draw a little line like you can see sort of the bottom. I'm gonna blend it up in here to the line and I'm gonna add like little double circles, one circle inside the other. If you look at a real picture of them, that's sort of what it looks like. Now these are just quickies, obviously we're just, and they're gonna get smaller as they go up. You're gonna get smaller as they go up. Remember proportion. Again, you might not see this one. Maybe this one would be underneath. Maybe you'd see again over here. And maybe you'd go, hey, that's not enough legs, Mrs. Conquest. So then behind your octopus, you wouldn't see where they're attached. So you could actually add a few more legs over here if you want or not, however you like them, right? And then you can add, again, go with your own style. They actually have like little kind of almost beady eyes. I don't know if that's what you would call it or not. But you could also make them kind of stylized. You could you know, do something like this. Are they more cutesy? Are they, is your style more cartoony? Or are you trying to go for a more realistic look? That's awesome. So here's a couple of creatures you can have. Um, I can give you a quick on, uh, let me just look at my, uh, so let's do a whale really quickly. So if you've got a whale, you're gonna draw that big so that they have pretty broad heads. You know there's gonna be a little hole up here where they blow their water out, all right? Now, different kinds of whales have different kinds of faces. So let's do this, and then we'll do his big chest. Coming down here, we'll come up. I'm just doing these right off the cuff. Yours are gonna look however you want them. I'm gonna give them a little of that. Um, uh, a beluga whale would have like little stripes under his belly kind of eventually as you get to the bottom of his belly, remember we talk about going with your lines, you're gonna sort of meet those lines a little bit, perfect. He can have a super cute eye like this, or he can be round and colored in, whatever your whale, he's gonna have a little thing here, whatever feels right to you guys. And of course he's gonna have a little fin somewhere, side fin. Or you could, if you, if you wanted, you could draw it facing down like this, which they do often if you're looking at them this way, and then erase what's behind it. Again, beauty of pencil and eraser. All right, so let's see what else we can throw together super quick. Um, what else is in the ocean? Let's see. Okay, let's do a quick seahorse. Um, so they're, we're very fond of those. They're super cute. So basically a seahorse, the basic shapes are its head, and then you're gonna have kind of a bigger belly, right? Okay, so again, you will er eventually erase these. These will just mark the space where you're gonna put them. And for the seahorse, um, I think I just did, they have that sort of little snout, and it kind of has a little flare at the end like this. Now again, I can't erase because I'm doing Sharpie, but remember, those ones holding the place are gonna just be our place. They curve a little in the back, and then you could make his tail this way, or you could make it this way, which they often go forward if you look at some pictures. 
But again, these are your design. I'm gonna come down here a little. I'm gonna go around that belly. So you can see I got a little bigger. His belly circle probably should have been there, but I knew what I was looking for. I made him a little bigger than I planned. I'm actually gonna reverse this. Again, I can't erase, but I'm gonna make his tail go forward. And I'm gonna start with that inside line and then make your outside line come to meet it and you'll have plenty of space for him. They generally have some lines on their underside. They usually have like a little bit of where their pouch is to carry the babies. They have this, they usually have a little bit of sort of this wonderful stuff on the back of their, actually it's almost acts like a rudder for them almost. So you've got this cute little C horse again you know, do the eye however you want. This is not an eye, that would be erased. You could do an eye like this. You can do it however you like. Give him a little eyelashes if he's stylized and you think he's kind of cute. Whatever is, whatever's making you feel like, yes, that speaks to me, that works for me. So um, let's quickly do, um, let's quickly do a shell. Shells seem tricky, they're not. We're gonna do a half shell and we're just gonna start with a basic pretty good size V. Now again let's talk about proportion. I'm doing nice and big so you can see that shell is not going to be this big if my whale is this big or my seahorse would never be this big if my whale is big. So think about maybe when you're envisioning what you want maybe make a little list on a separate paper I want this this and this in mine and maybe you could even do like we do in class a rough sketch first on a separate piece of paper before you move to your final work and then you, oh, I don't love the way he came out. I'm gonna move him around a little bit. But then size-wise, seahorses are gonna be tiny. Your shells are gonna be tiny compared to these. He's gonna be a lot smaller than this if your octopus or your um, squid are that big. So you're gonna start with this and then we're gonna add um, sort of a line here. This is all placement. Again, you'll erase these, uh, some of this stuff later. Okay, and now we have this. I'm actually gonna draw a couple more, okay, wherever I want. I set the general V, and then you think about closing these a little bit, and you can add more as you go. So I'm gonna think about maybe the little arching of this, okay. I would probably do, um, he's pretty big. I would probably um, add, I would probably actually end up making these more and then your sort of little bottom of your shell here. You can make it much rounder if that speaks to you. Again, that's the beauty of having an eraser, which I don't have right now. So I could put the bottom of the shell here, okay? And I could do these. And then I could go back with my pencil afterwards and give them that nice shaped on the top, okay? So shells come in all different shapes and sizes. They actually come, um, so let's do, this one's a little more tricky, but you definitely could. The beauty of this is it's gonna be yours. So let's just make this lovely little bottom of a shell, right? And then you're gonna sort of almost build it like it looks like almost like an ice cream cone, okay, as you go up. And then give it the little, you know, so you have these shells that have this little twisty thing in them. It's kind of and then you're gonna probably have a piece that would come over like this, okay? But more like a conch shell, but play with it. Look at pictures, like I'm just doing these randomly off the top of my head. They're not great because I don't have the time or luxury to sit and refine my look. I'm just showing you basic shapes, how to draw the basic idea. Let's do this um, really simply. Think about uh, underwater seaweed, okay? Remember, the water flows. So anything that's loose is gonna have to have some movement. That's why I'm giving these, and they can curve in multiple ways, okay? Simple, simple. Now, watch this. I can take the top of my leaf, I can put it down here, and I can crisscross it. It looks like it's twisted in the water. So this would be the back of the leaf, this would be the top. Again, here, maybe I'll make this one go straight down. Maybe this one's also turning in the water. I'm gonna put a little line in it, and this one's gonna come this way. Now I can build it up. I want one here, I like that. I'm gonna put a line straight up that one. I'm gonna put a line up this one. I'm gonna put a line up this one. You erase anything you don't want, it's gonna be in the sand. Also the ground. 
give the ground some different levels. Sand shifts underwater with the movement of the water. So you're gonna have some that might come right down into your main line or might go up behind in the distance, a much higher sand bed. Um, in my little uh, drawing that I just showed you, I actually filled it in with a lot of little dots that gave it sort of a sand effect. You could do that. How about some coral? Pick a basic shape and coral just is kind of really bumpy and kind of funky and just does its own thing. It could have, like, I'm just going for it. I, I, I've not actually drawn a coral, really. And I'm just thinking about pictures that I've seen of them and I'm just gonna give it some interest. And I'm gonna bump it around and I'm gonna make it come over here and I'm gonna, can be big, can be a tiny piece of coral. Could have, and listen, you could put a little Nemo behind it. Again, fish, super easy. Think about your shape of your fish. It doesn't have to be special. Maybe we give it a big open mouth. Maybe it's, um, let's see, uh, maybe it's some sort of, uh, they have that one with the antenna that lights up and he's got all these ferocious teeth. You could do a shark. Again, it's gonna be all you, whatever you want. But I do wanna make sure you're thinking it out, you're planning it out. A rough draft is an excellent idea. I wouldn't try to go straight to my final project right away. I would get some elements down. What do I like? What do I want to see in mine? Then think about color. Coral comes in aqua and an uh, orangey color that they actually sometimes call coral. Um, if you have crayons at home, you might have one called coral. These can come in all different kinds of greens. They come in reds, they come in yellows, um, sometimes even like neon ones. Uh, look up what a, uh, a, um, hor a horse, uh, hmm, just drop your blank is saying, that's help. Seahorse. <laughs> Brain, stop. Crabs are red or sometimes blue. Um, whales come in different colors. Octopuses. So be creative. Create on a separate piece of paper. Put it all together. But when you color it, I want you to really take your time. I want you to really follow through on getting all the details you want. And I want you to think about how it's all going to come together. Again, if you want to do above the water, Think about the sky. You're gonna to have to incorporate the sky, the skyline, the ocean waves, whatever you wanna do. Waves are, you could make a really cool, huge wave. Just remember that it's gonna be foamy on the edge. It's gonna have white there. This is gonna be blue or teal or anything like that. Um, boats, super easy. You basically start with a basic shape. Put your mast on, your, uh, it's actually called a bowsprit, that thing that sticks out in the front. Then you put your mast in the middle, put your sail on it, put somebody on it, don't put somebody on it, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat, basically. I want you to get really creative, but I want you to do the best job for me you can because I can't wait to see those pictures and hopefully I'll get together a lot of them and maybe you'll get to see a lot of other students work, which is really cool. So there's your assignment. I'd love to have you have it finished by Friday. Today is Monday that we're recording this. You'll probably won't get this until Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but I would love it by Friday. If you can, if not, um, as soon as you can, get it to your teacher. Put your best into it. Again, you have total freedom of what the content is as long as you're covering the bases and you have total control over what mediums you have at home to use. Crayon, marker, watercolors are great. That's what I actually used for the one I showed you in the beginning. Make it fun, make it interesting. Um, work with depth, so something closer to you is gonna look what? Smaller, something swimming way far in the back is gonna be bigger. So if you had a little seahorse in the front, you had a big whale, but he's way back in the water, he's not gonna be too, too much bigger than your seahorse, you just have to give the illusion that he's way back. So he might be behind some seaweed or something like that if you can sort of give that idea. So this is for um, K through um, seven and I really can't wait to see you guys I miss you all so much um, and I can't wait to see your work awesome get to it